In this unit we're going to concentrate on how waves move through a media and how we can change uh, the frequency or the wavelength or the speed of a wave. Now um, there is a couple things I want to review with you. First is amplitude and wavelength. Amplitude is a measure of maximum displacement. Uh, and what I mean by that is if this is the medium before the wave goes through it, then um, after the wave goes through it's going to have vibrations in it and you have crescent trough, crescent trough, crescent trough. This distance from here to here is a maximum displacement. This distance from here to here is a maximum displacement. Both of those are amplitudes. Higher amplitude waves carry more energy. For a longitudinal wave the difference is how compressed the compressions are and then the rarefactions in between. So this one's got pretty high compressions and pretty spread out rarefactions whereas this one there's not as big as a difference between them. So this has a higher amplitude, this has a lower amplitude. Uh, wavelength, remember, is the distance between identical points on waves. I have distance between crests, but it doesn't have to be. It can be from here to here. Those are identical points. It could be from trough to trough. So distance between identical points on waves is wavelength. Wavelength is measured in meters, um, and it is given a special symbol. It's the Greek letter lambda. Uh, and that looks like this. You can, you know, I scribble, but when you see me write that, I'm talking about the wavelength of a wave. It is measured in meters, but it is given the symbol lambda. Now, um, there's another property that we use to describe waves, and that's called frequency. Frequency refers to how often something occurs. For a wave, it's how often a wave is produced, or how many cycles occur in a second. So the rate at which waves are produced. This is, sometimes I think of it as vibrations per second. Since a wave is a disturbance or a vibration, um, it makes sense to me to think of how many vibrations happen in a given time. It is measured in per seconds, and those are called hertz. A hertz is 1 over s. Uh, so the unit is a hertz, which is a per second. Now, um, we use the symbol f to describe frequency, so that one's just exactly like what it sounds like. Uh, and it is determined by the source. So what I mean by that is whatever produces the wave is is going to determine the frequency of the wave. So if the source vibrates at 20 hertz, then the wave will have a frequency of 20 hertz. If the source vibrates at 100 hertz, the wave will have a frequency of 100 hertz. The frequency is independent of the speed of the wave. It's independent of the medium the wave is moving through. The frequency is determined by the vibration of the source. Faster vibration, the more waves are produced in a given amount of time. Um, there is something called period, which is the inverse of frequency. Instead of saying how many waves happen per second, it's basically how many seconds per wave. Or so for one complete cycle, that's one complete wave to go by. That's called period. It is measured in seconds, and it's given the symbol T. And because these two things are, are inverses of each other, it is true that the period is equal to 1 over the frequency. You'll notice period is a capital T. Um, otherwise, a lowercase t means time in general, the uppercase T refers to the specific time of how long it takes for a wave to go by, for how long for one complete cycle to occur. Now, what we want to do is we want to find a relationship between um, wavelength and frequency, and what we get from that is the speed of the wave. So wave speed describes how fast a wave travels through a medium, or how far a crest goes in a certain amount of time. So a wave, right, if I have my dead string again, when if I just send a single pulse through there, I'm going to go up and come back down, and a little bit while later, that pulse will have moved along that string, and it will be farther down, and then a little bit while later, that's it'll be farther over again, and it'll be down here. So it's moved. This crest has gone from here all the way down to here. That's how far it went. That's its change in position in some amount of time. And so we can calculate its velocity by taking that change in position divided by time. You'll notice I'm not looking at the vibration of the media. I am looking at the displacement of that crest as it moves through the medium. Okay, so wave speed, how fast a wave moves from one point to another. We can calculate it, um, but it does not depend on the frequency. So we use frequency to calculate it, but it depends not on the frequency, but on the medium through which it's moving. Uh, sound waves travel through air kind of fast at 343 meters per second. They travel through solids even faster, uh, and liquids are somewhere in between. So the speed depends on what it's moving through, not on the frequency of the wave. Um, Changing the frequency of a wave does not change its speed. Uh, um, 
and when a wave moves from one medium to another, its speed will change, and that can cause some bending and refraction to occur, and we'll look at that in our next unit. Uh, the speed of wave can be calculated by multiplying wavelength and frequency. Now this might seem a little bit odd at first that we're multiplying to get a speed, but if we think about this, um, wavelength is a distance, lambda is measured in meters, times frequency, which is a per second, or a hertz, well that's meters per second. That is the unit of velocity. Uh, so what we do is we actually calculate the velocity of a wave by taking the wavelength times the frequency. Uh, so V equals wavelength times frequency. Alright, so let's see how all these are related. So V is velocity, lambda is wavelength, F is frequency. We put all these things together. Since the speed is determined by the medium uh, and it's independent of the frequency, it's independent of the wavelength, the speed is fixed as long as a wave is moving through the same medium. The, there is an inverse relationship between wavelength and frequency because V is constant. If we increase the frequency, then the wavelength has to go down, and the opposite is true. If we were to decrease the frequency, then the wavelength would have to go up in order to keep the velocity the same. And the velocity depends on the medium, not the wavelength or the frequency. So waves that have a higher frequency have shorter wavelengths, and waves that have a lower frequency have longer wavelengths. Now, we can use our equation to solve an example problem, so let's take a look at that. A wave traveling at 26 meters per second has a wavelength of 10 meters. What is its frequency? As always, you start out by writing what you know. So this, 26 meters per second, that is a velocity. That tells you how fast the wave is going. Uh, it has a wavelength of 10 meters, so I know lambda equals 10 meters. And so V equals wavelength times frequency, since I want frequency. To get that, I have to divide both sides by the wavelength. And so V over lambda equals F. And 26 divided by 10 equals 2.6 hertz. So that means this wave vibrates 2.6 times per second. One more example, and then I'll let you guys continue on. A wave has a frequency of 200 hertz. If it travels at 20 meters per second, what is its wavelength? So again, uh, write down the information you're given. Frequency, 200 hertz. Travels at 20 meters per second. That's a velocity. What is its wavelength? Wavelength is my unknown. So V equals wavelength times frequency. 20 whoops, equals 200 times wavelength, divide both sides by 200, and I get a wavelength of 0.1 meters. Okay. So pretty straightforward, nice simple equation. Just don't mess up uh, velocity and frequency. Sometimes students will think that those two things are interchangeable, and they're not. Uh, velocity tells me how fast the crest moves from one place to another, whereas frequency tells me how often the wave is produced.